Well, hi there, boys and girls. Today we're going to take a look at alternating series, and an alternating series is a series whose terms are going to go plus, minus, plus, minus, plus, minus. They alternate, or minus, plus, minus, plus, minus, plus. And the way you're going to know that you're dealing with an alternating series, one way anyway, is you're going to have negative 1 to some power. That power can be n plus 1, it could be just n, but it's going to be negative 1 to some power. After that, you're going to have a sequence. So this is something that's going to be added in. The negative 1 to a power is not part of the sequence, but it does force it to go plus, minus, plus, minus, plus, minus, or vice versa, minus, plus, minus, plus. Uh, another tricky way of seeing this is by putting cosine of pi n in front. Do you see how that magically just disappeared over here? That's interesting. You could put cosine of pi n in front of 1 over n, and you don't see negative 1 to a power, but if as n increases by 1, you go cosine pi, cosine 2 pi, cosine 3 pi, cosine 4 pi, and that forces it to be positive 1, negative 1, positive 1, negative 1. So that's a tricky way of um, showing that it can alternate. Usually, however, we're going to have negative 1 to a power. Now, generally, we always do the nth term test to see whether or not the nth term goes to zero or not. If it doesn't go to zero, we say it diverges. And just because it does go to zero, that doesn't really tell us a whole lot. However, if we know that something does go to zero and it turns out that it's alternating, then we know that it's going to be convergent if the terms have a limit of zero and the terms decrease in magnitude. So this is going to be enough if it's alternating and the terms are getting smaller. So this is a specific check. It's also only a check for convergence. You're going to know you're going to check it whenever you see negative 1 in parentheses raised to a power. So we have over here what you must see. And this is like just our check here. If you have an alternating series, then it's going to converge if the limit as n approaches infinity of a sub n equals 0. You're checking that anyway. That's to see if it you know, fails the nth term test. And the, the terms have to be getting smaller. a sub n plus 1, the next term has to be smaller than a sub n. So here we go. If you have a series that alternates in sign and gets smaller and smaller and smaller at, and it has to approach 0, then it's definitely going to converge. You can never use an alternating series test to prove divergence. Um, if the limit is in, approaches infinity is not zero, it diverges by the nth term test. It does not di di diverge by the alternating series test. All right, so here we go. We're going to start with A. So we see that we are dealing with an alternating series. So what we are going to check, first of all, is we're going to plug in 1, 2, and 3. Let's get a few terms here. If we plug in 1, I get negative 1 to the 1 plus 1, which is 2, times 1 over 2 times 1 minus 1. I'm not going to write this out very often. I just want to show you we're plugging in 1. What we're going to get, negative 1 squared is a positive 1 times 1 is 1 over 2 times 1 is 2 minus 1 is 1. So our first term is 1. Now I'm not going to write the second one out, but if you plug in a 2, 2 plus 1 is 3, a negative 1 raised to an odd power is going to create a negative number. And we plugged in a 2 for that in, so that's going to be 2 over, and then I've got 2 times 2 is 4 minus 1 is 3. So the first term was positive, but the second term was negative. That will usually happen if this negative 1 is being raised to the n plus 1. Of course, it depends on what our lower index is. If this is a 0, it does the opposite of that. Let's get our next term just to see what it is. Our next term is we plug in a 3. Now, if we plug in a 3 for n, 3 plus 1 is 4, a negative to an even power is going to make it positive. And we plugged in a 3 for that in, so that's 3 over 2 times 3 is 6, minus 1 is 5. So here is our series. And it's going to alternate. So number 1, we know that we have an alternating series. So what is our check? How are we going to determine convergence? Do the terms alternate in sign? Well, I just proved it. I've got an alternating series. Do they decrease in magnitude, and do the, does the limit equal zero? So let's take a look at the limit as n approaches infinity of the sequence. Ignore the negative 1 to the n plus 1, just the n over 2n minus 1. Let's see what this equals. So I've got um, even, even powers here, and if you have even powers, 
then you've got to do the bobo bot and beatsy thingy. So is it bigger on bottom? Is it bigger on top? What's going on here? Well, it's they match, right? And so this equals, well, it equals one half. So what does this do? Well, it's not going to do what you thought it's going to do. This is definitely, this, this limit is going to diverge. I should have checked the nth term test at the very beginning. Like I said before, you must check this first. If that does not equal zero, and in this instance it equals one half, this diverges by the nth term test. So even if we have an alternating series, that does not mean that it's going to converge. So let's check another one. All right, so I've got this alternating series. Let's check and see what the limit as n approaches infinity of n over natural log of 2n is. The limit as n approaches infinity of n over the natural log of 2n. Now, a lot of people, are, they don't like dealing with natural log. We can't use our really our Bobo, Bot, and Beatsy here because we don't have a polynomial over a polynomial, but we can compare these. I do have a polynomial on the top, but I've got a logarithm on the bottom, and your log graph looks like this, and your n graph looks like this. Even though it's natural log of 2n, that's the same thing as natural log of 2 plus the natural log of n. Natural log of n looks weird with the two n's there. So your natural log graph actually grows slower. So let's compare their rates of growth. Now I realize we get infinity over infinity when we plug in infinity. But what can we do? We can use L'Hopital's rule. We can do the derivative of the top and the derivative of the bottom, which is going to be 2 over 2n. We can flip them over and we'll get 2n over 2, which is n. And that's going to be top heavy. That grows to infinity. This limit as n approaches infinity by the nth term test is not zero, therefore it diverges by the nth term test. Well, so far our alternating has not automatically proved convergence, so hopefully we get one that actually does converge. Here I've got an alternating series, so let's check and see what the limit as n approaches infinity of is. And again, the sequence is just the one over n. Finally, I have one that's bottom heavy completely, so I get zero. That's the first thing you gotta check, so check. Also, are the terms gonna alternate in sign? Well, let's just see, let's plug in a one. If we plug in a one, I get negative one to the first power, which is negative, so I get negative one over one. If we plug in a two, I get positive one over two, and if I plug in a three, I get minus one third. Finally, I, I have something that is alternating, also, the limit as n approaches infinity equals zero, and are our terms getting smaller? That's the one thing we haven't checked yet, but are, are the terms getting smaller? In this previous example right here, it looks like to me the terms were getting smaller. However, they were not approaching zero. In this example, finally, I can show my terms are getting smaller. One in magnitude, forget the plus minus stuff. One, one half, one third, that's getting smaller. It's approaching zero, and finally, also, it is alternating. So we are going to finally say the, we have a convergent series because they alternate in sign. They decrease in magnitude. And also, the limit as n approaches infinity of the sequence is zero. All three of these things must be true before you can say converges. All right, so by the way, this is called an alternating harmonic series. I re really would prefer it to be first term positive, second term negative, but it, it's an alter it was the harmonic series, but it alternates. Now remember the harmonic series was one plus a half plus a third plus a fourth, and what did we say about that one? That one diverges but the alternating harmonic series converges. And this picture shows a really good reason why. If we have, we start with a first term and then we bounce to, a, well, sorry, we start at zero when we bounce to a first term. And then we bounce backwards, but just not as far. And then we bounce to the right, but just not as far. And then we bounce to the left. This is the reason they have to be decreasing in magnitude eventually until you get to zero 
you are going to bounce back and forth and you're going to converge to some sum in this instance that's in between zero and whatever the first term was so it converges to this number because it goes plus minus plus minus the terms decrease in magnitude and eventually you're adding zero now we've got an extra statement here about what's called absolutely convergent and conditionally convergent a series is going to be absolutely convergent if you take away the negative one to the n power and you just look at the sequence without the negative one and you determine if that series converges however we're going to have a conditionally convergent series if your series converges but when you take away the negative one to the n power all of a sudden it's a divergent series so let's take a look at one there converges or diverges and if it converges we're going to determine if it's absolutely convergent or just conditionally convergent so the first thing I'm going to do is take a look at the limit as n approaches infinity I'm going to get to my pen here take a look at the limit as n approaches infinity of the sequence now the sequence is 1 over the square root of n and that is the same thing as 1 over n to the 1 half it's bottom heavy so that equals 0 so the first thing checks out now let's plug in numbers if we plug in a 1 I get negative 1 over the square root of 1 which is 1 and if I plug in a 2 I get positive 1 over the square root of 2 and if I plug in a 3 I get negative 1 over the square root of 3 so all, they are alternating it's an alternating series what's happening to my terms they're going to 0 and they are decreasing terms are decreasing so therefore they're decreasing in magnitude they're approaching zero and it's an alternating series so we're gonna say that this converges we've checked three things alternating series the terms are decreasing in magnitude and they're eventually going to approach zero so this is going to converge but now we're going to check absolute convergence and conditional convergence I'm going to take the absolute value which means every I'm going to term every term positive so that's going to be the series 1 over the square root of n and we're starting from 1 to infinity now to be absolutely convergent this series must also converge but if it doesn't converge then I've got a conditionally convergent series well this is if I take away the alternating part this is a P series with P equal to one half and what do we know about a P series where P equal to one half well, we know that's less than one so this is a divergent series without the alternating part so if the absolute value of the series diverges then it's called a conditionally convergent series and tomorrow in class I'm going to talk to you about what that means what's the difference between conditionally convergent and just absolutely convergent so that's enough for that and I will see you guys tomorrow